Hi and welcome to another video on the right path with me, Jeppe. It's been way too long since I last posted a video, but now we're getting back into the swing of things and we're starting out with looking at how we can manipulate dates in UiPath. So let's get to it. Okay, so we're inside Studio and the first thing I want to do is simply drag in a message box into our automation here. And the message box can output uh, string messages to, well, a message box. And uh, the first thing we'll do is simply type in now and then convert now, which is the current date and time, to a string. And if we run the automation now, we will see that it outputs the current date and time into our message box, September 26th, 2021. And I'll press OK. Now in .NET programming, and that is what this is actually, you can do a number of manipulations to a datetime object and now returns a datetime object. So if we press the period key here, we can see the properties and functions on this object. And for example, we can choose to add a number of days to the current date and time. And that will take a parameter, which is an integer or double actually. But we'll just type in three and then convert the result of that to a string again. And now it will return instead of the 26th, it should return the 29th. And as you saw, there are a number of functions and properties that you can set and get and uh, all of that on a daytime object. But in UiPath, there is an easier way. And if we go to the toolbox and type in date, we can see that there is this modified date activity. And if I simply drag that into our automation here, we can see that it has a number of properties. First of all, it has the date that we want to modify. Well, we'll just stick with modifying now, which means we're always manipulating the current date and time. And then we can add one or more modifications and we can test the modifications and we can output the modified date and time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable to save the result of the modification in. So I'll click the variables pane and I'll select the sequence as my scope and I'll create a new variable called not now because it's not now and that will be of a data type system date time. And then we can save the result of whatever modifications we do in that object. Now in the message box, we want to output the value of the not now object. And we'll also just output that to a string. So now if we run it again, we will see that we get back September 26th because we haven't added any modifications to the current time. So we'll add a modification and there are three types of modifications. We can find the next or previous day of week, meaning Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so forth. We can add or subtract a time period, or we can find the start or end of a period. So we'll start by finding the next or previous day of the week. So that adds sort of a sub activity here. And we want to find the next Friday, starting from right now. So uh, what we can do is we can test this modification. And right now, if I move this into the center, we can see that uh, the date to test is September 26th, 2021. And if we click test, we can see that the result is October 1st, 2021 being next Friday. So it looks like this will actually work. So if we run the automation, we can see that to the message box, we now output October 1st. Now we can add another modification to this. For example, the add or subtract time period. And we just want to add one week to our current date and time, but we're adding the one week to the already found next Friday value. So if we run this again, we should now add one week to next Friday, and that should give us October 8th. So let's try and run it. And indeed it does give us October 8th. Now the last modification we can do is the find start or end of a period. So we add that. And we want to find the first day of the week that has October 8th in it. So that should give us something like October 3rd or something like that. So let's try and run it. And that gives us October 3rd. So these modifications can be done either as a single modification or as a sequence of modifications. And right now I am converting the value of the not now variable to a string, but you can actually output the result of the modifications themselves as text. And in order to do that, you need another variable. And if we look over here in the uh, 
properties panel. We can see that we have the date time output variable and a text or string output variable. So now we will create a new variable and I'll just press control K and say not now string. And then we will select this check mark here to output the result as a text. And that will be saved into the not now string variable. And we can even select the format that we want to use. So if I want to select uh, this format and then go down to the message box and say we want to now display the not now string instead of the conversion that we did before. If I run the automation again, we can see that it outputs October 3rd in that new format. We can also choose to use a custom format. So if, for example, if I have a format that looks like this and we run the automation again, it will output October 3rd in that new format. So that's a really quick look at the modified date activity. Now, does it have shortcomings? Absolutely. Because when we are, for example, using the add subtract time period um, sub activity, you can only add days, weeks, months, or years. So I wish you had either the option of choosing smaller time intervals or that they actually made another activity called modified time, but they haven't so far. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. There will be new videos coming out soon. It will not be several months before I publish the next one. So make sure you hit the subscribe and like and all of that. And hopefully I will see you in the next one. Stay safe out there. Take care. See you.